So I want to talk to you about some new new changes in OpenJS Grid 1.3. Uh, we've added a couple new features here, uh, some that are really, really nice and kind of make this really close to a completely full featured grid. Uh, we've had inline editing. I already did a video on these drop downs. Um, but just to reiterate, and I'll show you a better example of these drop downs in a minute, that we've got the you've got select boxes as editable boxes, and you've got check boxes here as well. Okay, just reiterating on those. Um, there was a core change made, and again I'll go over that in a second. But one of the coolest new features is now you can right click on any column, and I've also I've redone this menu to be cooler. But it'll actually give you a sum, an average, a max, and min if it's a, a column of numbers, right? So not only do you have your options, but you also have data about the column. So if I, I can actually X that here as well. A lot of people are asking, well, how do you close the context menu? Well, you actually could click this to close it, but now, so if you right click here, it won't have that bottom part, but if you click here, it will. And it'll do things, you know, so if I want to find out the total, I can see that the, to the sum of all these is, is this much, and here's the average, which looks like it's calculating incorrectly because that's not the average, nor is that the max, and nor is that the min. Okay, so i got to redo the math, but uh, I'll get this right, and then you'll see that it's awesome. So uh, once I fix the math on that, probably should have checked that before I did the video, but I'm not going to stop now. So that's that. Uh, another cool feature, someone suggested this in the YouTube, is that I wanted to bring, so on a database, right, it tells you um, how long these fields are, right? So if I check out, it's got a field length here, right? I want to be able to, to get this field length from the uh, from the database and then set the max length on the text box when you're typing because you shouldn't be able to input more data than you actually can take into the database, right? Well, there's a cool query. Um, I think if you... Can I undo? So I think you can do show columns uh, from orders, right? And hit run. Uh, or odors, orders. There we go. Cool. So what I what I've got here is I've actually got a field, a type, a null, a key, a default, and an extra. I actually can extract this this length from here. And so what you can do now is in here, all you have to do is set max length to true. And what that will do is pull in the max length from the database and set that on the grid. So for example, the max length. On, so n items is editable right here, right? So if I look at n items uh, back here and say, uh, well, let's so n items is here. The max length is 11, so I shouldn't be able to type more than 11 in this box, right? So if I start typing, um, you know, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and I can't. Well, oh wait, did I turn it off on that grid? I think I turned it off on that grid. Let's try it down here. Hold on. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I had it turned off for that top one. So, yeah. So, I, I can't... I'm typing in lots of things right now, and I can't type any further, right? So, it's it's stopping it here, and I can right-click and inspect element and see that, okay, it actually does have the max length set. So, I bet you're curious how that works. Um, I had to make a couple core changes for that, but it, it wasn't too bad. Um, mainly, what happens is it will... where did I put it? Right, so first it's gonna check for the max length and then what it does is first it kills the tick marks because they just get in the way it'll try and get the table name that it comes from because here's the problem you can't just do that show all and extract that data because uh, you have columns that might be joined and might be coming from different tables so if they're joined and coming from different tables that means there's gonna be a dot in the uh, in the field name and therefore we can extract which table that field is looking for so we do that here we either use our current table or we extract the table from the dot you know table dot whatever and then we just do the show columns where field equals this we extract that type field and then we do some awesome regex here uh, to figure out what it was and if you're wondering how this regex was formed it's I think I still have it right here so you have the var char in here, 50. I just I'm gonna try and select that. So the way I type this is, I go okay. Uh, let's start from the opening parenthesis, but because parenthesis is a used uh, character in regex, we're gonna escape the parenthesis. So we're starting here, and then now I want to start remembering everything from now on. So I'm gonna wrap in parentheses, okay. And now what am I remembering? Well, I'm remembering everything. Uh, 
everything until I get to a closing parenthesis, right? So I'm gonna so because that's a, a group selector, I'm gonna use square brackets, and so I'm gonna put something in here. Well, I wanna search for everything that's not a closing bracket, right? So not would be the caret, and then not a closing. Uh, parenthesis, you can't just put the parenthesis, again, it has to be escape, so escape parenthesis, and that's going to give me that, and now you're like, okay, well, that's only one, correct, I need everything, right, so I'm going to do one or more of the following, so here is the following, which is that thing in square brackets, so I'm going to hit a plus sign right there, and that's going to give me one or more of all that, so if I actually hover over this, you can see that my zeroth selection is parenthesis 50, not the one I want, but look at my one selection right there, 50. That's the exact thing right there. So this is the proper regex to extract something from parentheses if you ever wanted to know. Uh, anyway, back to what we were talking about. So then I just store that in a new array, right? So there's a new array being passed back now. And if I go to grid.js here, and I just uh, write about here, if I say console.log call data, there's a new property that comes back called call data. And so if we actually hit that here and do that, can't find variable call data. Well, because it's data.calldata. Right, and refresh. I know I'm going fast here, but you're, you're okay. So you can see that only one of these has call data. And if I look at that, I can see that I've got all the rows that I, or all the columns that I have. And then there's data inside each of these. Well, right now there's only max length, but I imagine in the future there might be more properties that I want to pass through. And now that it's available, you can use it as a developer. So if you go to grid PHP, you're thinking, how do I use it? Well, right here at the end of the call, it literally sets call data to call data, right? So you can just loop through here and set your own data if you want. Boom. Anyway, so that's that's that new feature. Um, I fixed a couple of searching problems that we had. Um, another huge core feature that I love, I, I love this feature. I actually think I wrote in the code that this, yeah, I wrote this is so nice, <laughs> this feature right here. What it does is, you know how I, I used to, if you've seen the other videos, I was saying you can set options this way. Well, I was kind of losing the aspect of the grid by saying, well, let, if you make this huge object, well, that was the whole point of this grid is not to make a huge object. So what you can do, and I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a live copy of a website here where I'm using this um, to show you some complicated examples and to show you that you can now set all these options as attributes on the table instead of actually having to make the job the object uh, one reason why that's really important is because sometimes you're looping through a PHP array and making generating tables on the fly and you need them to have specific options but you can't always create the JavaScript object ahead of time they may not all be the same right so uh, let's just hop over to to that code and show you that here's a table example that I've got the call set up I've got now you can write editable this is a text box select box select box text box check box I have width set and a new feature null text for uh, if you if for null text for um, select boxes right uh, null text doesn't really matter for these it matters for here so what that does is if I uh, go over here and, and refresh so null text actually puts puts a null value in here that wasn't there before. It will automatically put that there and select it if null value is selected. So this um, is, so well, let's reiterate before I move on. This is a really cool way without having to set a giant object. Like here's my object. See it's not giant along the whole page like before. I set it all right here. And you can do that. And now there's a really cool piece of code um, that, where is that? that thing I said that this is so nice, this, is that this piece of code actually uh, uses the, the, it basically takes what's in the attributes and puts it in an object that I use throughout the whole code here. And that way I, I don't have to look for whether you have an attribute set or whether you have an option set. You can now set them both independently of each other. You can do both. You can set them as, as attributes and you can set them as objects. It's actually really nice. So anyway, so the call for this is pretty simple. That's all it is. This grid is probably the most complicated example you might get. Okay, this is a hugely packed, complicated grid, but it's still using the very simple uh, techniques that we've been learning. Every single field in this grid is editable. This is a complete editable grid. It's got four boxes, four completely, um, four completely uh, independent uh, select boxes. It's got see, these. All these fields are editable. You know, ah, uh -uh, and save. Uh, it handles all that beautifully. It actually re re rearranges them because it's sorting by code, sorting by code descending, right? Um, so if I bring it to the top, right? So all this, I got check boxes. I've got 
you know, I've got a whole everything. It's all working and it's all wonderful and you can search and sort and page and it, it's all there. Let's take a look at the PHP behind a complicated example. This is the page that makes that complicated example. Not much here. Uh, there is a lot here though. This is the grid function that gets called. Um, but there's not that much here. There's really no SQL, not much you have to worry about, which is kinda nice. All I do is I open the grid with discounts just like I did before. And then I just check for save by doing grid save. Very same thing, you know, really easy at that point. And then here's the hard part is just doing the select boxes. Uh, this this exact uh, method gets called uh, four times to load the select boxes. And so I just say, okay, I'm getting a select box now. Let's make it. Okay, which column I am? I have. I'm doing select boxes for these categories. Uh, and the cool thing about these select boxes, they all come from different tables in the database. So I just said it. This is the table I want. Makes my select box. This is the table I want make my select box. And then here's an even more complicated example. Here's a table I want. Here's some joins. And here's like some concatenation to figure out these. You know, so these select boxes can get really advanced, right? And there's even a group by involved in all this. I mean, there's a lot you can do with this technique. And then I've got a non-database one. This one is literally just boom and array right there. Uh, and there you go. And then here's the normal grid load call. So it's really not that complicated, but you see how much you can do with this grid. And it's you know it's fast, and it's it's got all the features you will always have. And uh, this is a really complicated example here. So there you go. Um, those are new features coming in uh, in version 1.3. Uh, so look out for that. Thanks a lot.